Welcome friends of Powerhouse Bakery and all my favorite divas and dudes out there. Thank you so much for those of you that pop by to visit me. Um, it's such a treat to get to see you in person. I miss you all so much. Um, what I want to share with you today is a beautiful dish and it's so easy to prepare. And honestly, a lot of folks um, have never cooked a whole chicken and uh, oftentimes are a little leery of how to cook a whole chicken. Um, perhaps you've done a turkey on the holidays um, and maybe that scared you away from doing it any other time of the year. But I wanted to show you a really easy approach and it's absolutely lovely. So um, I'm gonna pull it out of the, fr uh, the oven here and I'm gonna show you the finished product and then I'm gonna show you the whole um, assembly. Um, but before I do that, I also want to show you how to shop for the right chicken. What I have here is uh, an air chilled organic chicken. And I also have another one to show you. And it's actually brand new now at HEB. And it's just a Springer brand. There's several that are like this. Um, but this one is just a young whole chicken. What I wanted to do for you is compare the different labels so you can really see the difference. If we're going to cook a really good quality meal that includes chicken, we really want to show you um, how to pick it. And if you look at these, there's some interesting differences. For starters, this one is three and three, three pounds and a little bit more, 3.35. This one is quite a bit larger. It's a four pounds, almost four and a half. 4.5. Now look at the difference in price. This one, wow, costs $16.64. I know, right? Huge, big difference. A little bit of it has to do with the weight. This one is $4.99, right? So yeah, there's difference in weight. This one's about three and a half. This one's about four and a half pounds. But let's look a little further. This one, the unit price is $1.49 per pound right? That sounds pretty good. This one, the unit price, price per pound is $3.69 a pound. Wow, that's where you're seeing a lot of difference. So then the question is, what are we paying for in the one that's um, about $2 more per pound, um, not to mention the fact that it's bigger. So what I want us to do is compare the um, information that they're giving us on the label. Let's first look at this little small one. This is a young whole chicken. Um, it's certified gluten-free, uh, non-GMO, and here it's got checkoffs. No hormones ever, no antibiotics ever, no animal byproducts in the feed ever. All natural fresh chicken. So let's break down those terms a little bit. Um, hormones. When are hormones allowed in the the livestock and when are they not? So that's a good question. Also antibiotics. Sometimes antibiotics are given to the animal at certain stages of their life to make them healthier. This one is stating that they never get it. Um, now, the same thing with the hormones. In some products, the animals are given antibiotics at an early stage in life. They might be given hormones at an early stage in life to help them grow, as well as having um, animal products in the feed. So, Chickens, if you've ever been around chickens, they eat animal products. They peck and eat bugs and worms and anything you'll feed them. I grew up um, with visiting my grandparents and we would gather chicken slop right off the table and we would give them pretty much scraps. So there's really nothing wrong with getting a, uh, an animal or a chicken um, food from an animal, right? They, they are definitely carnivores, they're not herbivores. So that was a little bit misleading, but the other ones, hormones and antibiotics, have definitely scared people into thinking that that's not healthy. There's some equivocation around whether or not that's healthy, but that's part of the selling information on this. So the front of pack label gives us some information as to why we want to pick this chicken. Now let's look at the air chill chicken. This one has a little more information. 100% chicken, no water added. So of course we think, yeah, no kidding, it's all chicken. But what we don't know is this one that weighs less and costs less has been injected with some 
saline solution. So the cleaning process is very different than the ideas of how the chicken is raised. So what the chicken is given when it's, you know, at a young age or old or wherever when the animal is alive is what we're learning about here on the front of the pack. The other part that's really important is how is the animal processed after it's been slaughtered? So that's where this is interesting because this has no added water. Um, so the normal process for chicken is that it goes through a bleach bath, and that sounds scary, but it's basically just a very small amount of um, bleach in order to make sure there's no um, bacteria at all in the solution. The chickens go into that bath, and then they come right back out, and they get dumped in a saline solution, which allows there to be water added because the saline um, soaks into the, the tissue, hopefully making it a, um, a more juicy product, but also it makes it weigh more, okay? As in W-E-I-G-H, it weighs more. Now this one, no water is added, so it never goes through that bleaching process and it never goes through the section where the saline is added. That's why every ounce of this is edible meat, okay? And then the rest is about the same. No antibiotics or hormones ever, that's the same. Fed a vegetarian diet, just like this one, no animal products. A little bit of difference here because this one says it's fed an omega-3 rich diet, flaxseed, uh, non-GMO, so pretty much the same. Granted, this one didn't go to the point of saying it fed them um, flaxseed, but this one doesn't even tell us how much. So it could have been one flaxseed for a thousand chickens, right? So we don't know how much, but it's trying to sell you on that as being a healthier quality. Um, the next one down, see omega-3 and cholesterol comparison panel on the back. So they're trying to say that what they fed the chicken has actually made this product healthier. Uh, and then raised with access to the outdoors for improved animal welfare. So we want to feel good about how happy that chicken was before we cut off its head. <laughs> okay, so th the reality is we don't know if it was a happy location that it was. I mean, you know, so it's just really information that's trying to upsell us on why it's $2 more per pound. Okay, but what I want to show you today is how to make a fantastic chicken even if you decide not to get the upgrade, heck, you could even get an, uh, a non-organic chicken and still get a really good product. But I think it's probably smart to at least get the one that has some better qualities on the front of pack labels. But again, there's no evidence out there, ladies and gentlemen, that hormones or antibiotics are going to hurt the human after eating them. Okay, so I really want us to know that that's probably more hype than anything. But let me show you what I baked. Ta-da! Look how beautiful this is. So I'm gonna break down what I've done. Um, this fortunately is a nice small chicken, but on the recipe that I'm gonna give you, it's gonna talk us through how to use the best um, cooking element. I love using cast iron. It's really nice because not only does it look great from the table, but it also really helps in the cooking process. Let me show you how pretty this can be displayed also. So again, I could put that right on the table and it would be absolutely gorgeous. But if you happen to have a serving tray, it makes it even more fancy. And let's face it, we love the wild factor, even if it's not Thanksgiving. So the chicken is pressed, which just means that I have tied the legs together. Now before cooking, which I'm gonna show you in a minute, I'm gonna show you how to put the herbs in. I'm gonna show you how to season it from the inside out. So beautiful. Now you can cook these veggies in a separate casserole. Um, and that would make sense if you had a large uh, bird and it didn't fit into your cooking vesicle. Um, the other thing that's important is make sure you get all the cuts of your veggies about the same size. And this recipe is gonna have you cook it for about an hour. Um, if you had a thermometer and you'd wanna check the internal temperature to get right around 155, and then take it out of the oven at 155 and then let it just rest. It needs to rest on the counter. Don't touch it. Don't cut into it because the carry over cooking is what means uh, when the temperature continues to rise just a little bit once you take it out of the oven. So that's really important. Now all these beautiful giblets, uh, cooking little piece, pieces and parts, I'm going to put into my um, my vegetable and my, my poultry broth, which is so great. So I'm gonna show you how to do that too. So again, we could have this wow factor. We bring it to the table and if you have a beautiful dish, it just makes it so much fun to get presented in that. 
and then you get to show off your beautiful chickens. So send me some pictures if you end up doing this, okay? I sure hope you will. Okay, so let's get started on how we do this. Now, this is, um, of course, raw, and I'm gonna put it in this um, skillet because it's already been used. Because look, at there's, um, there's some air in there, so I don't want it to splatter, and I wanna make sure that I reserve all those juices. You know, the risk is that chickens carry salmonella, and that's why so often um, people are worried if they're getting a chicken that has not been um, prepared, you know, cut, and already maybe even skinned and deboned people are kind of afraid of all of the bacteria. But the reality is most chickens are, are fine and we're gonna wash and prepare it even before we cook it. Um, the first thing we're gonna do is take out the giblets and this is gonna be wonderful for making a broth like I mentioned. So I'm gonna tear open this bag and show you what we have in there. So the ones that we wanna use for the broth will be the neck bones, the heart and the, the gizzard, which is this little um, rough piece. And I know some people don't even like to touch these things, but it's just a, a little critter and he gave us his life, so it's good. Um, I'm going to put it in a pan. So these are the giblets that I'm going to use for making my, my broth. We don't want to use the liver. That's no bueno. You can give it to your dog. He will love you for it, but don't use it in your broth. No good. Now, the rest of this um, I'm, I can just rinse or not, um, and I want to make sure that I'm going to pat it dry and get any of the moisture off. You know, I did a little bit of research, and of course, we're going to cook this baby up to 160 uh, degrees, so any bacteria that it would be on the chicken is going to go away, but um, some chefs like to wash it anyway and pat dry. Others say it doesn't matter, so you get to decide. I'm going to add some water to this and get some paper towels, and I'm going to get going on putting it together. All right, so patting it dry. Look at all the beautiful herbs that I have that I'm going to use for this t-shirt. I'm going to use um, my clean skillet after I get all of the moisture off. The packaging is just going to have a little bit of moisture. And again, if you wash it, it's always a good idea. It's not obligatory, but it's not a bad idea. So now, all, I'm going to place my dry chicken into my beautiful clean skillet. And again, you could use a casserole. If you don't have a cast iron, you could act, actually use a 9 by 13 pan and it'll be just fine. It's really nice though to make sure you have plenty of space around. Okay, so that looks great. Now the question is, how do we season it so it tastes amazing inside and out? So let's get started. First thing we're going to do is get plenty of salt all inside the cavity. So I'm going to use my sea salt and you can use Himalayan. You can use classic sea salt. You can use kosher salt. It doesn't really matter, but you want to get good amount inside the cavity. And I'm also going to kind of rain it all across. It maybe it ends up being some recipes will say a tablespoon. I think that's very dangerous because then somebody's going to put a whole tablespoon in and it'll be a small bird like this one and be too salty but it is good to have plenty of salt on there, okay? So then the next thing I'm gonna do is add some of my beautiful herbs. So I picked these this morning from my garden. This is fresh thyme, and this is sage and rosemary. So you don't have to use them all. If you had a, a one that you wanted to focus on, you could absolutely do that. A um, Couple things, I'm gonna put at least one good sized rosemary in the cavity. So I'm gonna tuck them in there. See, and so I want to make sure I get it in there nicely fitting, right? Then the next thing I'm going to do is create little holes with underneath the skin. So I'm just going to, you can use your knife if you didn't want to use your finger. Look, it very easily just comes right off and I'm just going to open up that space. And I'm going to add some of my beautiful thyme. And you can break them off if you want. You could even pull them off and tuck them in there. But I kind of like it when the whole stem shows through. It's actually really pretty. So I'm going to tuck it in and you can get like four or five good strands. I hope your gardens are growing. I hope all of you have a, an herb garden growing and it's in a pot um, so you can move it around when it gets too hot in these crazy Texas summer days. Um, remember that you want to water from the bottom up so it has to have a good saucer underneath it or one of those great little plastic um, uh, trays so that the water can sit 
slowly be absorbed by the plant. It's good to water from the top, but you always have to let it soak in from the bottom too. Now look, I'm gonna also get a little bit of my herbs right in the leg. So I'm gonna make a tiny little hole and just tuck it right inside there. Now, if you wanted to use garlic, you could also do that. Um, peel the garlic and just tuck them right in all underneath the skin and it's absolutely fabulous. There we go, it's getting right there. Okay, so now the next thing I wanna do is tie the legs together and I'm also gonna tuck the wings right under. So just before I put it in the oven, these wings are gonna tuck under and I'm gonna tie these little guys together. And the whole idea around trussing is that it just makes it look pretty, but also it helps it to cook and it keeps it from drying out in the center. So I'm gonna keep adding a few more herbs. And I think I might even add some sage. I absolutely love sage and it's so pretty when it pops through the skin. And don't forget you can um, pull it out midway of cooking and add a few more if you want. But the whole idea about this recipe is it's so easy to put it in the oven and let it go. You do need to preheat your oven because it's gonna need to be a hot oven. So you start off with about 425. If you do have a large bird, it's not a bad idea to um, let it cook at the 425 for a good amount of the time. And then if it's not coming to temperature, but your color is already right where you want it, then just turn down the temperature, add some foil and let it continue cooking. Okay, that looks great. All right, get, let's add a little bit of caraway too. One thing I do is um, I always add extra seeds to my, um, my pepper shaker. And this one I haven't yet, so I'm gonna just sneak in a couple little surprise seeds in there. I love having that little bit of extra flavor. And then of course, using fresh ground pepper is so important to add to that really beautiful color and texture. There we go, it's looking gorgeous. Maybe just a few more seeds. Now look at all the veggies I have in my platter here. Um, we are gonna dress up the sides of this beautiful bird. And uh, again, you could cook these in a separate casserole um, if you're not sure about the cooking time. But for the most part, it's so nice to have them all together. Get one more little sage leaf in there. And of course, save some of the fresh herbs for your display so that uh, at the end, you're ready to put some fresh herbs all around it. All right, so I think that's ready. Now I'm gonna add my veggies. So I decided to get a couple of small peppers. We of course could use large peppers as well, but this is a really easy way because I can just throw them in whole. I'm gonna dress them first so you can kind of see how um, we wanna get plenty of oil, a little bit of seasonings on these fresh veggies so you can get lots of flavor. One thing that's so nice about having a roast chicken is you almost just wanna eat it right out of the oven. Uh, it's one of those things where you don't have to uh, cook it ahead because you can put it in the oven and an hour before your guests show up, you can have, just pull it right out of the oven. So I'm gonna pull all these in. I think I'll put a little bit of fennel into. It's one of my very favorite vegetables. It's just so, so fresh and very European. So it, I love just adding in that old world flavor. It kind of looks like a celery, um, but it doesn't taste like a celery. It's got a very mild anise flavor, so it's a really nice one. So again, we wanna do um, multiple colors in our vegetable mix and pretty even cuts. And so I'm trying to make sure they're similar in size. The potatoes are both tricky ones. We wanna make sure they do cook all the way. So I am gonna go ahead and cut these in slices because nobody likes a hard potato. So we wanna make sure they get really soft and creamy. So I'm gonna add them to my bowl here. Maybe just one more. You could also add onion to this. It would be a fabulous addition. I was kind of putting fennel in there in place of that, but see how pretty that is? We want lots of beautiful color. Let me grab my olive oil and I'm gonna put it right on there. Okay, so a little bit of olive oil around my veggies. And don't forget the fresh ground sea salt, or again, Himalayan. And a little bit of pepper. So the same seasonings that I put on the chicken, just about, I'm gonna throw in some fresh herbs there too, right at the end. So I'm gonna get a good stir. 
And now I'm going to sprinkle them around. Notice that I used a little bit larger skillet on this one than the last one I showed you that was already prepared. Because I want to have plenty of room to put them all around. This is my, my skillet from my home. Um, and I use it every day. In fact, my son just got married. And I'm, uh, I'm preserving one for him. So if you have a cast iron skillet and you want to preserve it, um, you basically have to uh, put it several coats of olive oil on it, put it in the oven at low temperature to kind of, it's called seasoning. But um, it's such a fabulous, um, important part of your kitchen. So if you don't have one, make sure you get one started. Okay, so that is just about ready. The final thing I want to do is truss my little legs here. And so I'm going to wrap this little, you can use either um, a cord or a piece of twine and it's going to stay in place until you serve your chicken. So I'm just using this little wire cord. I'm going to put them right together there. And it just looks neat and tidy. So how pretty. And because I've got them pretty well hidden, I'm not going to worry too much about the wings. But whenever you can, just tuck them underneath so they don't get too brown. And they stay right under there. And that way, they're so delicious. I read in one cook's um, description that that was the most special part. And so whoever is carving the, the chicken gets to eat the, the wing as they're doing that. So this is all pretty and ready to go in the oven. Again, you're going to do 425 for at least 45 minutes. So set your timer, preheat it while you're putting everything together so it's nice and hot. You want to put it in when it's hot and put your timer on and forget about it. At 45 minutes, pull it out and you can check it to see if you're close to the 155 uh, temperature zone and if it is between 155 and 60 pull it out let it rest for at least 10 minutes and then start carving hope you absolutely love it and send me some pictures okay see you soon